AMD Ryzen G series or processors get a huge price cut. Asdrog remains MD900WS series to creator series. Micron says GDR7 will improve ray tracing. AMD's Trix Point APUs based on AI will be launching soon. And lastly, a new tool for the Ryzen 9000 CPUs have emerged. Okay, so first up we have AMD Ryzen 7 5700G, of course in the AM4 series of CPU, but it's getting a huge cut in price looking at 160 USDs, a price drop of 55% from 359 USDs. It's a huge drop and it's expected because it's an older generation of processor. I, now I guess it's gonna be one generation old or maybe two generation old if you consider APUs and CPUs at the same time. But then again, just for the APUs we're considering, which is 160 USDs for Ryzen 7 5700 g which is mind-blowing and a good budget option now we also have aimed to rise in 7800g literally the newest apu we can find from amd already getting a price drop which is not a big drop but again a nine person drop isn't too bad 299 from 329 it's a pretty decent drop considering it's a pretty new APU. Similarly, Ryzen 5 8600G getting 181 pricing coming down from 229 at 21% drop. Also, it's seeming like a pretty good budget option, this one, if you consider AM5 platform. And probably the best budget option would be the AMD Ryzen 5 8500G. It's also a 6-core 12 thread processor, but coming at only 159 in an 11% drop, making it 159 from 179. So it makes it the best budget option in the AM5 platform right now so if you're interested links will be in the description it doesn't cost you anything and it helps the channel out so you may check it out next up we have a leak from momomo underscore us and basically we got an asrock creator series graphics card basically it was the ws series from asrock but they renamed it and this is the images that we have found so as you can see this is the basically the creator series which is the iradion rx 7900 xtx and as you can see this is a blower style gpu so asrock making blower style gpu isn't really new and we're looking at a creator series basically a renamed ws series to creator series looking pretty decent it's also using the 12 volt pin you can see right over here which is the newest of course the newest pin that they have implemented and of course it's utilizing only one of them so i guess it's pretty evident that you know amd gpus are pretty efficient in this case but amd gpus don't really utilize this pin most of the amd's new gpus don't utilize don't really utilize a 12 volt pin like that one so we're looking into a shift here which is pretty evident here and asrock is making it for sure kind of disappointing the backplate isn't that great looking because you can already see you can see the pcb literally only this particular part is basically backplated but the rest isn't which is kind of strange that should have but either way doesn't really change the fact that it's a pretty decent looking gpu next up we have an article from pc gamer and basically we can understand one particular thing is that micron is obviously manufacturing a gd7 and they claim that it will improve ray tracing and restoration performance by 30 percent that claim is a lot because 30 percent is something that is generational so micron is saying that they're, they're expected to achieve greater than 30 percent improvement in frames per second for ray tracing and restoration workloads basically when you compare the gddr6 x or gddr6 compared to the gddr7 we get to see this kind of performance uplift well definitely it may sound like a remarkable uplift in terms of ray tracing and restoration performance the thing is in actual gaming performance i don't think that would be the case according to pc gamer they have tested several benchmarks here with different memory speeds and as you can see in a system utilizing core i7 14700kf and and the RTX 4080 Super, although this is not utilizing GDDR7, we can understand something from this case here, which is in 3 Mark Performance Steel Nomad test, we're looking at three tests they've conducted utilizing three different memory speeds, a 1550, 1438, and 1312. And all of these speeds, we're looking at the average FPS is 67, 66, and 64, respectively. Again, not a huge gap in terms of performance. In Speedway test, we're looking at similar kind of performance, 75, 74, and 70. In this case, there is a slight increase in performance, of course, when you increase the memory speed, definitely. But still, not so much. Not like the 8, 30%. Again, in Cyberpunk 2077 high settings, utilizing the same test, we're looking at an average FPS of 103, 102, and 97, respectively. Again, no sign of 30% increase in performance, even when you drastically change the memory speed. Similar story here in the Cyberpunk 2077 ray tracings, which is, again, quite similar 
52, 54, 55, they look literally the same. So basically what we're seeing is that a jump of 18% between the slowest and the fastest VRAM speeds only produces around 5% to 7% gain in frame rates. A 30% gain, even when you increase 18% speed, does not seem like that is the case when you're looking at only 5% and 7% gain. So Micron's claim of gaining 30% is quite a lot. So not sure what they're cooking up. Basically, if they are claiming 30% increase in ray tracing, that it that would mean the GDDR7 speed has to be a lot more than just 30%. So we'll see about that. Next up, we have a leak here from Hong and Fu, and basically he's claiming that AI 9 HX Pro 370 and AI 7 Pro 360, both of these trace points APUs, which will be utilized in the AI, of course, because the naming tells you everything, and also has quite an obnoxious naming they're gone for, will be releasing six months after Pro 8000 release, meaning that would be on October of this year. If you look into the time frame, that would be October after six months of a Pro 8000 release, so that would make more sense. He also adds that as far as I know recently, there will be no changes to specs of SKUs announced at Computex on launch day. So these AI processors, they will have literally no change in specs, definitely. So let's look into the specs here, which is the AMD Ryzen AI 9 Pro HX 370 coming with 12 core 24 threads, 16 CUs of Zen 5 slash RDNA 3.5 that will be utilizing RDNA 3.5 CUs, which is interesting because it will be basically utilizing the ray tracing cores of the RDNA 4 and the normal restoration cores of RDNA 3 so that is quite interesting of course it will be coming with AI accelerator which is NPU XDNA 2 and the configurable TDP will be around 15 to 54 similarly a Ryzen AI 7 Pro 360 coming with 10 core 20 threads 12 cores of CUs XDNA 2 similar configuration of TDP and lastly we have something quite interesting from Wanasmus a notorious of course software developer for clock tuner for Ryzen and Project Project Hydra and that particular Project Hydra is what we can understand is the Curve Shaper which will be called the AMD Ryzen Curve Shaper. Now what is that? Well according to OneOSMOS this new feature aims to prevent processors from unnecessarily boosting frequencies during idle periods and under low temperatures. The reason for this is straightforward. Basically we can understand that there is no need for CPUs to operate at high frequencies when handling simple tasks that demand minimal CPU power. So obviously when your CPU is an idle or when you're just browsing or something like that you would not require any sort of high cpu frequency obviously that would be a waste of performance so this curve shaper basically makes the cpu to operate at lower frequencies when it is at idle or requiring less cpu power so this feature will not interfere with cpu performance under heavier workloads and higher temperatures because in that case there is no need to apply this particular tool as you would need more performance so it won't be interfering it also also, it is expected to integrate directly into AMD's Ryzen Master Software, eliminating the need for third-party downloads. So you just need the AMD's Ryzen Master Software and that is all you need. You don't need to worry about installing it in a third-party way or anything. It's just gonna be there as a new update or patch. So as one of us tweeted, the release of Zen 5 is still a month away, but today I'll be bringing the curtain down on one incredible new overclocking feature for enthusiasts, Curve Shaper, an add-on for AMD Curve Optimizer. It also adds previous Previously, we had to select CO to be stable at both low and high temperatures throughout the entire load range. In most cases, the limiting factor was high temperature and low CO. Now everything will change and we will be able to control CO over the whole temperature range. For now, this feature is only limited to Ryzen 9000 series that hasn't been released yet, but of course, they will be available for only these series of processors. Not sure about the previous generation of processors, but we'll see. Hopefully, they will include all kinds of processors here for AMD.